Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how you can edit your video inside of My Media. So I have a video that I have recorded using Lecture Capture and I'm going to go into the edit settings by finding my video and navigating over to the little pencil here on the right. So I'm going to click on edit and it's going to open my video here and my video will be up here and I have a whole bunch of different options here that I can choose in regard to editing my video. So I can change the name if I'd like to change it. I can just write in a new name here. I'm going to leave mine the way that it is and not change it, but you can change that name if you like. Here under publish, now we're going to talk more about publishing your video when we are going to discuss the media gallery inside of Moodle. But basically, this is where you're going to go to take your video from my media and from being private in my media and publishing it to a Moodle course for your students to see. So by default, you know that everything has to be saved as private. But from here, we can click on published. And what will happen is all of your Moodle courses that you're associated with should show up here under published. Now, I have an administrative account, so all of my courses are going to show up here. But for you, the only courses that are going to show up here are ones that you're associated with. So you're just going to check off the course that you want to put this media into and then press save, which is all the way down at the bottom. So here we also have options, and now there's a few things here that you have to choose from. The first thing is comments. Much like a YouTube video, all of your Kaltura videos are going to have comments by default. So viewers can watch your video, leave a comment on it, and just say anything that they have to say about it. If you don't want to have comments for your video, you can disable it here. And you can also allow comments at first, but maybe after a while you'd like to close the discussion and not allow any new comments. If you do that, you would just come back into this editing screen on this video and choose close discussion. The other option here is clipping and that will enable people to make clips from this video of maybe useful information that they would like to see later. The next tab here is going to be collaboration. Now you have two options here. Here under media owner, you can take this video and give somebody else complete ownership of this video. Now keep in mind, if you change the media owner by clicking on change media owner and you put their name in here, once you make this change, you will no longer have access to this media and it will no longer be inside your My Media page for you to access. So just keep in mind before you give that ownership away that you know what you are losing. Now, if you would like to give somebody privileges but still have access to your own video, that's where media collaborators come in. If you click on add collaborator, you can go ahead and type the user or the people that you want to add as collaborators. And here under select permissions, you're going to give them a specific kind of access. So co-editor privileges means that person will be able to edit your video. Co-publisher means that person will be able to publish this video inside of their class as well. And co-viewer means they'll be able to view that video, but that's it. So once you check off the kind of privilege you want that person to have, you would click on add and that would then add that person as a collaborator. Here under thumbnails, you can change the thumbnail that is on your video if you don't like it. So there are a few things you can do. You can upload a thumbnail that you have already. You can do a screen capture of a thumbnail if you'd like with your webcam or you can click auto generate, which will give you a whole bunch of different options here. So if I don't like the one that they chose for me, maybe I want to choose this G Suite one, I can auto generate that and also download it to my computer if I need to use it for whatever reason. Now when people see your video in their media gallery, this is the thumbnail that will show up for them. The next option here is downloads, and this will just allow the viewer to take your video and download it so they could watch it later. You would click on source and press save, and that will give them that ability. Now here under captions, captions are automatically ordered for every time you do a video. So when you play it back, captions should be there for you already. Now there might be a time when you have captions that they're not completely accurate. For the most part, they have really great accuracy, but to edit those captions, you can click on edit captions. And then as you play the video here on the right hand side, we'll give it a chance to load. Okay, there we go. We can play our video here on the right hand side and you can see that it we'll plays with, with countdown your captions. And you'll have the ability to stop or pause your recording. And we're actually going to use the... 
So the captions for this video are actually pretty good, but if I did want to change something or something was wrong, I could just go ahead and click inside of where those captions are and just type what is correct and then just save it. Once you do that, your video will be more accessible. So I'm going to go back and leave everything the way that it is. I don't want to make any changes. And that's all you really need to know about captions. Here under attachments, this is where you can add something along with your video if you'd like as an extra piece to it. So maybe you'd like to add the PowerPoint presentation as an attachment so students can download it. Maybe there's a picture that's associated or an article. With this, you can just click upload file and add those files and students will be able to download these as attachments when they watch the video. Timeline is next, and what this allows you to do is to create chapters for your video that will allow the viewers to go to different points of that video quicker than others. So as you can see, there are already some chapters that are created here. And the reason why that is, is because I used a PowerPoint presentation, Kaltura automatically created chapters for me based off of what my slides are. So you can basically just go through and see what's here and you can see what those chapters are associated with. Now, if you do not like the chapter that they've created for you, you can click on that chapter here and go ahead and press delete chapter and that will then get rid of that chapter for you. So if you wanted to create chapters of your own, it's very simple to do. You would just drag the red bar here on the timeline to where you want the first chapter and then you would click create a new chapter and let's say we wanted to do chapter two for this and we can press save and then maybe right around this mark we want to do chapter three so we'll click another chapter and we'll do chapter three and then click save just give it a second to save there and now we have our chapters so if you want to see what this looks like we can click view and player and here at the top we can click on these three horizontal lines and notice our chapter two has been created and if we scroll down we can find where it says chapter three and if you go ahead and click on it it'll take you to that part in the video so chapters are really great especially if you're trying to highlight a specific thing that's particularly important. Maybe you're trying to break up a long video so that students can access things faster. This is especially good if they're trying to study for a test and maybe they need to focus in on one topic as opposed to the whole PowerPoint. They can use the chapters to find that or maybe you just want to break up your session into different topics. So timeline and chapters allow for a lot of opportunities like that. The last option that you have here is replace media. And really what this is, is let's say you have a fresher version of the video that is better than the one that you originally posted, or maybe you just needed to change that, that media, you can come here into replace media, choose a file to upload and upload the new media on top of this one. And this way you don't have to change any of those details that are associated with it. You just have to change the media itself. We also have the launch editor here, which we will talk about in a separate video. But the launch editor allows you to go into your video and use a snipping tool to create a different video, maybe cutting out different scenes or creating transitions with fade in and fade out. So it's a very basic editor, but it allows you to make a few other changes to your video that you can't do in this page here. So if we go back to our media page, it's going to take us back here. And we'll click My Media and that will take us back to our My Media page. So that's really all you need to know about editing your video and getting started with it. And the more you use it, the more you'll get to know what each of those settings mean and it'll help you create a better video each time.